bloody man is that? He can report as seen by his plight of the revolt to the newest state. This is the Spartan! We're like a good and hardy soldier against my captivity. Hail, pray, friend. I say to the king, the knowledge of the broil has added to leave it. Doubtful it stood. As two spent swimmers that did cling together and choke their hearts. And the merciless MacDonald from the Western Isles is supplied. And fortune on his damned quarrel smiling showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth disdaining fortune with his brandished steel which smoked with bloody execution carved out his passage till he faced the slave and there shook hands and obeyed so well to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chaps and fixed his head upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. Mark, King of Scotland, Mark. But no sooner justice had with valour armed, but the Norwayan lord, surveying vantage with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes, it's sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion. <laughs> if I say sooth, I must report they were as cannons of a charge with double cracks, whether they meant to bathe in reeking wounds, or memorize another Golgotha, I cannot tell. You know what My gash is cry for that. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds, they smack of honor both. Go, oh, get him, surgeons! <laughs> When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That'll be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Macbeth. Fair is foul. And foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. Fair, fair is foul and foul, foul is fair. fair. Hover through the fog and, and filthy air. air. comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. What a haste looks through his eyes. God save the king. Whence came thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwayan banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, till that the dauntless Macbeth confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Yes! yes! <laughs> Great happiness. No more that saying of Cordor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go. Pronounce his present death. And with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won.
Foul and fair a day I have not seen. like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are aren't. Live you? Or are you what that man may question? You seem to understand me. By each at once her chappy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women. And yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak. If you can, what are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glams. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start? And seem to fear things that do sound so fair. For the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace, and a great prediction of noble having and of royal hope, that he seems wrapped with all. To me, you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time, and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth, and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Say, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By my father's death, I know I am Thane of Glams. But how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives, a prosperous gentleman, and to be king. Stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cawdor. Say, from whence you owe this strange intelligence? Or why you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted his breath into the wind. Would they had stayed? such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor too, when did not so? Self so same tune and words, you see. The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. We are sent to give thee, from our royal master, thanks, only to herald thee into his sight, not pay thee. And? For an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition, hail most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What can the devil speak true? 
The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet? But under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Treason's capital. Confessed and proved. Have overthrown him. Glams and Thane of Cawdor. The greatest is behind. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? That trusted harm might yet enkindle you into the crown besides the Thane of Cawdor. But tis strange. And oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousins, a word I pray you. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image makes my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise. And nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me king, why? Chance may crown me without my stir. Come what? Come may? Time and the hour run through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. I ask your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and in good time, the interim having weighed it, let us speak our free heart each to other. Very gladly. Till then. <laughs> Enough. Come, friends. execution done on Cordor. Are not those in commission yet returned? My liege, they are not yet come back. But I spoke with one who saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like Leaving it. He died as one that had been studied in his death. To throw away the dearest thing he owed as twere a careless trifle. There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. worthiest cousin. The sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Would thou hadst less deserved that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness part is to receive our duties. And our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe toward your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to make thee full of growing. <laughs> 
noble Banquo, that hast no less deserved, nor must be known no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. <laughs> <laughs> my plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. <laughs> Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, no. We will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm. Whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. Which honor must not, unaccompanied, invest him only. But signs of nobleness, like stars, shall shine on all deservers. From hence to glams. And bind us further to you? I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. Humbly take my leave. My worthy Cordo. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down. Or else, or leap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. They met me in the day of success. And I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. And whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came missives from the king who all hailed me Thane of Cordor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with hail king that shalt be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the juice of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay to thy heart and farewell. Glamed thou art. And Cordor. Do I fear thy nature? It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great. Art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. Hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the valour of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who whatso would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, 
stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose. No keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold! Hold! Great glams. Worthy corridor. <sighs> Greater than both by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dear is long. Duncan comes here. Tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Or never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my Thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time, bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up, clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest. To me. <laughs> oh, this castle has a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. See, see, our honored hostess. <laughs> the love that follows us sometime is our trouble, which still we thank as love. Now herein I teach you how you shall bid God yield us for your pains and thank us for your trouble. All our service in every point twice done and then done double. We're poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad, where with your majesty loads our house. <laughs> Where's the Thane of Cordor? We coursed him at the heels, but he rides well, and his great love, sharp as his spur, hath halp him to his home before us. <laughs> Conduct me to mine host. We love him highly. And shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. If it were done, when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. 
if the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with her surcease success. But that this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time, we'd jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here. That we but teach bloody instruction, which being taught, returns to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First as I am his kinsman and his subject. Strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan has borne his faculties so meek, has been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the d deep damnation of his taking off, and pity, like a naked newborn babe, striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which all leaps itself and falls on the other. Hannah, what news? He hath almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Has he asked for me? <laughs> no, you not, he has. <laughs> we will proceed no further in this business. He hath honoured me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss. Not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love, art thou afeard? To be the same in thine own act and valour as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemed the ornament of life and live a coward? In thine own esteem, letting who I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat in the attic. Pretty beast! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves. And that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck. And know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out and I so sworn as you have done to this. Mm -hmm. If we should fail. We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail when Duncan is asleep. His two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the water of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason, a limbeck only. When, 
In swinish sleep their drenched natures lies as in a death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done to... Who dares receive it, other? as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death. I'm settled and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat away and mock the time with fairy show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take this later, sir. Oh. Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. The candles are all out. Take thee that, too. A heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Give me my sword. Who's there? <laughs> A friend. Not sir, not yet addressed. The king's abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure, and... Uh, this diamond he greets your wife withal by the name of most kind hostess and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect, which else would free have wrought. All's well. <laughs> I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they've showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, I would spend it in some words upon that business. At your kind pleasure. If you will cleave to my intent, when tis, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it. But still keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear, I shall be cancelled. Good. Repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Go, bid thy mistress. When my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell and get thee to bed. Ah. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come. Let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. 
Are thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressive brain? I see thee yet. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. <laughs> Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood that was not so before. business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, o'er the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Now witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder Alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing stride towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps which way they walk. For fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for tis a knell that summons thee to heaven. Given me fire. Hark! Peace. It was the owl that shrieked. He is about it. The doors are open, and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their posits, the death and nature to contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? Who's there? Black, I'm afraid they have awakened and it's not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. I laid their daggers ready, he could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept? I am dunked. My husband? I've done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended. Oh. Oh. Who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. Uh, this is a sorry sight. 
foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh in his sleep, and one cried murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands, listening their fear. Say amen when they did say God bless us. Oh, consider it not so deep. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. <laughs> I thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. Oh, the innocent sleep. Sleeve that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life. Saw labor's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course. What do you mean? <laughs> Still it cries, sleep no more to all the house. Glance has murdered sleep, therefore Cordor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that has cried? <laughs> Wait, worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Uh, why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go! Carry them. And smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I've done. Look on again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. <laughs> the sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. It is the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If you do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. with me when every noise appalls me. <clears throat> what hands are here? Oh. They pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No. This my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color. But I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy has left you unattended. Hark more knocking. Get on your nightgown as to occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, for best not know myself. <laughs> Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. If a man were porter of Hellgate, 
He should get old. Turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Jesus? <laughs> Beelzebub. Here, a far ooh that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Oh, come in time. Have napkins enough about you. Here, you sweat for it. Knock, knock, who's there in the other? Devil's name. Fair. Here's an equivocal case who committed treason enough for God's sake, yes, could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocate. Knock, knock, never ask. Quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for hell. A devil porter it no further. I had thought of it in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. And on and on! I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir. We were carousing till the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir. Nose painting. Sleep. And urine. Lechery. It provokes and unprovoked. It provokes the desire, but takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him and admires him. It sets him on, but it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. It makes him stand to and not stand to. Equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie leaves him. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow. <gasps> All is the king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet it is one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for it is my limited service. Goes the king hence today? Huh? Uh, he does. Uh, he did a point so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamentings heard of the air. Strange screams of death. <laughs> Some say the earth was feverous and a chick. It was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Oh, horror, horror, horror. Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is to say? The life? I mean you, His Majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new Gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourself. Awake! Awake!
ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason. By Crow and Donald Bates. Malcolm, awake. Shake off this downy sleep death counterfeit and look on death itself. Awake. Ring the bell. What is the business of such a hideous trumpet caused to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak. Speak. Oh, gentle lady, it is not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master is murdered. Well, alas, what, in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee, contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it, the spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh. By whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers. Which on white we found upon their pillows, they stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yes. I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal, and neutral? In a moment, no man! The expedition of my violent love outran the pauser reason! Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart, courage to make his love known? Ah, help me, Look to the lady. Why do we hold our tongues and must make claim this argument for ours? Well, what should be spoken here? Let away. Our tears are not yet brewing. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. And the great hand of God I stand. And thence, against the undivulged pretense, I fight a treasonous malice. And so do I. So, so let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well contented. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To so Ireland, I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers, immense smiles. The nearer in blood, the nearer bloody. His mother is sharp, but shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim, therefore to pause. And let us not be dainty of leave taking but shift. Hmm? Away! I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night hath trifled former known. Thou seest the heavens, as troubled with man's act, threaten his bloody stage. By the clock, tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is it night's predominance, or the day's shame that darkness does the face of earth entomb? When living light should kiss it, tis unnatural. Even like the deed that's done. Ah, Macduff. Ah. 
how goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Suppose that Macbeth hath slain. Alas the day. What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He's already named and gone to Scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Coombkill. Will you to Scone? No, cousin, I'll hope to Fife. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. all as the weird women promised and i fear thou playst most foully for it yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity but that myself should be the root and father of many kings if there come truth from them as upon thee macbeth their speeches shine why by the verities on thee made good may they not be my oracles as well Set me up in hope. Chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me. Ride you this afternoon? Aye, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice at this day's council. But we'll take tomorrow. This far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time to this and supper. If you're not my horse, the better. I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that, tomorrow. Are you to horse? Who do you? Till you return at night. Goes Fleons with you. Aye, my good lord. Our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. <coughs> Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we will keep ourselves till supper time alone. Well then, copy with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are my lord without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing. But to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep. And in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares. And to that dauntless temper of his mind, 
He hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act with safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear. And under him, my genius is rebuked. That he chid the sisters when first they put the name of king on me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they put a fruitless crown. No son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. Put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them. And given mine eternal jewel to the common enemy of man to make them kings. The seed of Banquo kings! Rather than so, come, fate, into the list, and champion me to the utterance. Go to the door and stay there till I call. Was it not yesterday that we spoke together? It was. So please, Your Highness. Well then? Now? Have you considered of my speeches? No. That it was he in the times past that held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made plain to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments, who wrought with them, and all things else which might to half a soul, or to a notion craze, say, thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospeled as to pray for this good man and for his issue whose heavy hand has weighed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my leash. <laughs> Aye, in the catalogue, ye go for men as hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, Chuffs, water rugs, demi-wolves are called all by the name of dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter. So with men. Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it. And I will put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our health, but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, toked with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on. Both of you know that Banquo was your enemy. It's true, my true lord. One. So is he mine. 
And though I could, with bare-faced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I must not drop, but wail his fall, <laughs> who I myself struck down. And thus it is that I, to your assistance, do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry, weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Oh, uh, uh, your spirits shine through you. Within the hour at most, I will advise you where to place yourselves. The moment off, for must be done tonight. And something from the palace. Always think that I require a clearness. And with him, to leave no rubs or botches in the work, Fleon's his son that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to us than his father's, must Embrace the fate of that dark hour. So, resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved. We are resolved. I'll be with you straight! Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Banquo gone from court. Hi, madam. But returns again tonight. You say to the king I would attend his leisure for a few words. Madam, I will. Desire is got without content. It is safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Sorriest fancies your companions making. Using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself. As our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both the world suffer. Uh, we will... Eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead, whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison. Malice domestic. Foreign levy. Nothing can stir him further. Come on. Gentle, my lord. Sneak all your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I, love. And so... I pray be you. 
that your remembrance applied to Banquo. Present him eminence both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must bathe our honors in these flattering streams and make our faces visits to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. But in them, nature's copies not eternal. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate summons, the shard-born beetle with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal, there will be done a deed of Dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their prey do rouse. <laughs> Thou marvelous at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So, prithee, go with me. Who did with the joint with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust. Then stand with us. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day. The near approaches the subject of our watch. A light. Will it rain tonight? Let it come down. Step to the ground. Oh, it's Was not the way. There's but one down. The sun is flat. We've lost best half of our affair. Well, let's away. Say how much is done.
know your own degrees. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks they are welcome. See, they encounter thee with their hearts. Thanks. Both sides are even. Here, I'll sit in the midst. <laughs> Be large in mirth. <laughs> There's blood on thy face. It is Banquo's then. It is better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord. His throat is cut. That, uh, I did fear him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. But he were good that did the like for Fleance. Most royal, sir. Fleance is escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect. Whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I'm cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo safe. Oh, my good lord, the safe in a ditch he bites with twenty trenchant gashes on his head. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled has nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. We'll hear ourselves again tomorrow. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Sweet remembrancer. Now good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Here had we now our countries on our roof were the graced person of our Banquo present. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. <laughs> Would it please your highness to grace us with your royal company? The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? My good lord. Here. Gentlemen, rise. His Highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seed. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, he will again be well. If much you note him, you will offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I am a bold one. The devil look on that that might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. 
This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger, which you said led you to Duncan. These flaws and starts and postures to true fear would well become a woman's story to witness fire authorised by her grand oh. shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on the air. Really? See there? Behold. Look! Lo! Huh? How say you? Why, what care I? If thou canst nod, speak to! If charnel houses and our graves must send those we bury back, why then our monuments will be the moors of kites! Are you quite unmanned in folly? If I stand here, I saw him. By the shame! Blood hath been shed in the olden times. I, and since two murders have been performed, too terrible for the ear. The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die and there an end. But now they rise again with 20 mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My royal lord. <laughs> Your noble friends do lack you. I, I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, oh. <laughs> which is nothing to those that know me. Now, love and health to all. Then I'll sit down, give me some wine, fill. Full, I drink to the general joy of the whole table. And to our dear friend, Banquo, who we miss. Would he were here, to all in him we thirst. And all to all. Our duties and our Ни меня, я вернусь, толку очень жди, жди, когда на воде от груз, же только и дожди, жди нет. Жди меня, я вернусь, только очень жди, жди, когда на воде от груз, же только и дожди. Thee. Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this good Piers, but as a thing of custom, it is no other, only spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare, I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the hurricane tiger, Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves will never tremble or be alive again and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit, then protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow. Unreal mockery ends! <laughs> Being gone, I'm a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth. Broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. 
Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe when I do think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks while mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night. Better health attend his majesty. Yes. <laughs> it will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak, augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and chuffs and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. What's the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? How say you? Macduff denies his person at our great bidding. What did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them, but in his house I keep a servant, feed. I will tomorrow. And betimes I will to the weird sisters, more shall they speak. For now I am bent to know by the worst means, the worst. For mine own good, all causes shall give way. I am in blood stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning were as tedious as go o'er. Strange things I have in head that will to hand which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep! Come. We'll too. Sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We're yet but young indeed. <laughs> My former speeches have but hit your thoughts, which can interpret further. Only I say things have been strangely born. We cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donalbane to kill their gracious father, damned fact. How it did grieve Macbeth, did he not straight, in pious rage, the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was that not nobly done? Aye. And wisely, too, for it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it, and so I say he has borne all things well. And I do think, had he Duncan's sons under his key as, and please heaven, he shall not, they'd find what twere to kill a father. So should flails. <laughs> but from broad words, and because he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast, I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell me where he bestows himself? <laughs> Stone days and nights is 31. 
Midnight hags. What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. Howe'er you come to know it, answer me. Though you untie the winds and let them fight against the churches, Though the yesty waves confound and swallow navigation up, though palaces and pyramids stoop their heads to their foundations, answer me to what I am. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou'st rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them. Let me see them. Pour in sow's blood that hath eaten her nine pharaoh. Grease that sweatin' from the murderer's gibbet, throw into the brain. Uh, come, come high or low, low thyself and office deathly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows I thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Must say. Macbeth! Macbeth! Beware, Macduff! Beware the sin of fight! Dismiss me! Enough! Whatever thou art, for this good counsel, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear aright, but one word more. He will not be commanded. Here is another, more potent than the first. Macbeth! 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 <laughs> Had I three ears, I'd hear this. Be bloody, bold and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? And yet, to make assurance double sure, I'll take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live. What's this? Listen, but speak not to it. Be lion metal proud and take no care. Who chase, who press, or where conspirers are. Not there shall never vanquish thee. Until great Burnham Wood to high Dunfermline Hill shall come against him. That can never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound root, sweet bones. Good. Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place, Macbeth, shall live the lease of nature. And yet my heart throbs to know one thing more. Shall 
Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me, and an eternal curse light on you! Let me know! Show! 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down. Thy crown does sear my eyeballs. Thy hair, thou other gold-bound brow, is like the first. The third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? The fourth, starred eyes. What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Never yet. A seventh. I'll see no more. And yet, an eighth appears, who bears a glass which shows me many more. And now I see, it is true, for the blood-bolted Banquo smiles at me and points at them for his. What is this so? Aye, sir. All this is so. Where are they? Gone. Come in without there. What's your grace? Well. Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride. I did hear the galloping of horse who was came by. Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. Time. Thou anticipates my dread exploits. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the blade his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. But no more sights! Or his fear. Wisdom! To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion, and his titles in a place from whence himself doth fly. He loves us not. Oh, he wants the natural touch. The poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear, and nothing is the love. As little is the wisdom, and the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is wise, noble, judicious. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea. <laughs> 
I take my leave of you. Oh. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at their worst will cease. Or else climb upward to where they were before. My pretty cousins, my blessings on you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I am so much a fool. Should I stay longer, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Sarah? Your father's dead. What will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, Mother. <laughs> what? With worms and flies? With what I guess, I mean. My father is not dead, for all your sake. Yes, he is dead. How will that do for a father? Nay, what will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell again. That speaks with all thy wit. And yet a faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And may all be traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged who swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Oh, God help thee, poor monkey. But how would that do for a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. How that talks. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known. I do fear some danger is approaching nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. What ends with your little ones? To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage to do worse to you a fell cruelty which is too nigh your per. Heaven preserve thee. I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm! I remember now. I am in this earthly world where to do harm is so laudable. To do good, something I might count it dangerous folly. Why, nevertheless, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have done no harm? What are these faces? Rather hold fast the mortal sword and like good men bestride our downfall and birth to 
Each new morn, new widows howl. New orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. For I believe I'll wail what no believe. And what I can redress, as I shall find the time to, friend, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was one thought honest. You have loved him well. He has not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. But I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, that the brightest fell. I have lost my hopes. A chance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in this rawness left you wife and child? Yeah, those precious motives. Those strong knots of love without leave-taking. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps. It bleeds. And each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think with all there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here, from gracious England, have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, then my poor country shall have more vices than it had before. More suffered, more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself. I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, Black Macbeth shall seem as pure as snow. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, Smacking of every sin that hath a name, but there's no bottom, none to my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your maids could not fill up the system of my lust. Better Macbeth than such a one to reign. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty and yet seem cold the time you may so hoodwink we have willing dames enough who is this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that were i king i should cut off the nobles for their lands desire his jewels and this other's house and my more having would be as a source to make me hunger more, that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper. Yet do not fear. Scotland hath foisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable with other graces weighed. But I have none. The king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, Bounty, perseverance, mercy. Mercy. Lowliness. Devotion. Patience. Courage. Fortitude. I have no relish of them. Nay, how I power. I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland, Scotland. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. 
O oh, nation miserable, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since at the truest issue of thy throne, by his own interdiction, stands accursed and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was a most sainted king! The queen that bore thee often upon her knees and on her feet. Fare thee well, O oh, my breast. Thy hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains has sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over-credulous haste. But God above deal between me and thee, for even now I put myself to thy direction, and unspeak mine own detraction. Here abdure the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman. Never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own. At no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself, what I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command. Whither, indeed, before thy hero approach, old Sibbet, with ten thousand warlike men already at a point, was setting forth now we'll together. And the chance of goodness be like a warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. <sighs> See who comes here. My countryman, but yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin. Welcome ever. I know him now. Good God. The times remove the means that makes us strangers. Sir. Amen. Stands Scotland where it did? Alas. Poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing, but who knows nothing, is once seen to smile. The sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked, where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy. Oh, relation too nice and yet too true. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why? Well. And all my children? Well, to... The tyrant has not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a niggard of your speech. How goes? When I came hither to transport the tidings which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumour of many worthy fellows that were out, which was, to my belief, witnessed the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers. Here's your comfort. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good Seward and 10,000 men, an older and a better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. What concern they, the general cause, or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. <gasps> I guess I did. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To relate the manner were to add the death of you. Merciful heaven. What man?
Now pull your hat upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the earth wrought heart and bids it break. My children too. Wife. Children. Servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. My wife killed too. I have say. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones. Did you say all? Oh, hell, Kite. Oh, what all my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop. Disputed like a man. I shall do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Naught that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine, fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, Enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and brag it with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Front to front bring thou this fiend of Scotland of myself. Within my blade's length set him. If he scape, Heaven forgive him, too. This tune goes manly. Come. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. And the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long, but never finds the day. Two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw a nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it and again return to bed, yet all this while in a most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, Doctor, which I will not report after her. But you may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you nor to anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo, Doctor, here she comes. Observe her. Stand close. How came she by that light? Why, it stood by her. She has light by her continually. It is her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. Oh, it's an accustomed action we her. To seem thus, wash in her hands. I've known her to continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Oh, she speaks. Uh, I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out. Damn spot. Out, I say. Two. Why, well, then, tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie. A soldier and a feared. What needs we fear? Who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The Thane of Fife had a wife. 
Where is she now? What will these hands ne'er be clean? No, no, no more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with this starting. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I'm sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. It is the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, what a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. Oh, I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet I have known those which have walked in their sleep who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banco is buried. He cannot come out on's grave. Even so. To bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come. 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 Give me your hand. No. <laughs> 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 What's done cannot be undone. Oh, 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 to bed. Oh. To bed. Oh, 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 oh to bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their death pillows will discharge their secrets. God, God, forgive us all. Look after her. Remove from her the means of all annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. So, good night. My mind she has mated and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. power is near. Led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them, for their dear causes would, to the bleeding and the grim alarm, excite the mortified man. Near Burnham Wood shall we well meet them. That way are they headed. Know you if Donalbane be with his brother? For certain, sir, he is not. I have a file of all the gentry. There are Sibbert's son and many unrough youths that even now protest their first of manhood. What does the tyrant? Great Dunsamane, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that do lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. But he said he can no longer buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now. Does he feel his secret murder sticking to his hands? Now minutely revolts upbraid his faith breach. Those he commands move only in command. Nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hang loose upon him 
like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Who then shall blame his pestered senses to recoil and start, when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march we on, to give obedience where it is truly owed. Remove to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born a woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequences pronounce me thus Fear not, Macbeth! No man that's born a woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. Mind I sway by, and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt, nor shake with fear. <laughs> the devil damn thee, black, thou cream-faced loon. Where gotst thou that goose look? There is ten thousand geese, villain. No, soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face and overread thy fear, thou lily livered boy. What soldiers, Patch? Death of thy soul, these linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers, Wayface? The English force. So please you. Go take thy face hence. Satan! I am sick at heart when I behold Satan, I say! This push shall cheer me ever. Or deceive me now. I've lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf. And that which should accompany old age as honor, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have, but in their stead, Curses, not loud, but deep. Mouth honor. Breath. Satan! What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Bring me my armor. It is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scur the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Bring me my armor. How fares your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. You were her of that. Can so not minister to a mind diseased, pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet oblivious antidote, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. <laughs> Throw physic to the dogs! I'll none of it! Come, give me my armor. Doctor, the thanes fly from me. 
You, sir. This bat! If thou couldst, Doctor, cast the water of my land, find her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo that would applaud again. Pull it off, I say. What rhubarb, senna, or what purgative drug will scour these English hence? Hearst thou of them? Aye, my good lord, your royal preparation makes us hear something. I will not be afraid of death or bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery earn uh, report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other, but the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane. It is his main hope. Towards which? Advance the wall! Hang out our banners on the outward walls. The cry is still they come. Our castle strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and the ague you eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have dareful met them beard to beard and beat them back with home. What is that noise? It's the cry of women, my good lord. I've almost forgot the taste of fear. The time the bean my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I supped full with horrors. Dianus. Familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Days of lighted fools away to dusty death. Out. Out. Brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then he's heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou camest to use thy tongue? My story, quickly. Gracious my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, 
Then on me thought, the wood began, began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath, if it be not so. Within this three mile, may you see it coming. I say, a moving grove. Speak as false. Upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive till famine cling thee. If thou sayest sooth, I care not if thou dost as much for me. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend who lies like truth. Fear not to burn a wood to come to Dunsinane. Now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. Arm. Arm! And out! If that which he avouches doth appear, there is no flying hence, nor tarrying here. I begin to be weary of the sun and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Bring the alarm bell. Blow wind! Come, wreck! At least we'll die with harness on our back. Where the Macduff and we shall take upon what else remains to do according to our order. Fare you well. Can we but find a tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our traffic speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. <laughs> My blade, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. I was born a woman. I 
Slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. I cannot strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their staves. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my blade with an unbattered edge I sheathe again, undeeded. There thou shouldst be! By this great clatter, one of greatest note scenes brooded. Let me find him fortune, and more I beg not! Was he that was not born of woman? Was he that was not born of woman? Swords, I, I smile at weapons, laugh to scorn. <laughs> Brandish by man that's of a woman born. <laughs> Turn, hellhound. Turn! Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is charged with too much blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my blade. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out! <laughs> This labor, as easy mayst thou the entrenchant air with thy keen blade impress as make me bleed. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Be the tongue that tells me so, and be these juggling fiends no more believed that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee. And live to be the show and days of the time. We'll have thee as our rare and monsters are, painted on a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou, opposed being of no woman born, Yet I will try the last. Before my body, I throw my warlike shield. Be he that first cries, hold!
Would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Well, some must go off. And yet by these I see so great a day as this is cheaply bought. My cuff is missing. Hail, King. For so thou art. Behold, where stands the usurper's cursed head? The time is free. shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you, my thanes and kinsmen. Henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, where it is thought by self and violent hands took off her life for this, and one needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, to each one whom we invite to see us crowned.